All right, let's look at the government structure of Iran, which can get very confusing. A lot of appointed positions, elected positions, uh, religion plays a role, also political parties as well. So first off, we talked about the supreme leader, and what do we know? Um, again, Khomeini is the second supreme leader leading since 1989 uh, and is the head of state, but not a figurehead. It does have some um, kind of power there, um, but not just a figurehead. So the supreme leader, again, uh, leads on this concept um, of using theocracy, using uh, religion as the guide. Okay, so you have uh, the idea of Faji leading Islamic jurists to interpret the Quran. So this is the individual um, that interprets Sharia law. Um, for the rest of the country. This is the top person, uh, the top cleric to do so. Also eliminates presidential candidates. So again, can vet is the term that we're going to use. Uh, can vet candidates to get rid of them. Can also dismiss the president. Helps with commanding the armed forces. Can declare war and peace. Uh, appoints a lot of um, major administrators and especially judges because the judges um, are jurists, Islamic jurists, and follow the uh, Quran and Sharia law. And then has a role in nominating six or half of the individuals that serve on the Guardian Council. So the Guardian Council is a body that reviews bills from the Majlis. The Majlis, again, is the parliament of Iran. Uh, they also decide who can run in the elections for the presidential position, the Majlis position, and another um, position or organization called the Assembly of Religious Experts. Uh, the Guardian Council is made up of 12 people. They're male. They have six-year terms. Uh, six, again, are appointed by the Supreme Leader. And then six are nominated by the Chief Judge, again, a cleric, and have to be approved by the Majlis or that legislative body. So if you look at one of the bodies that we have is the Assembly of Religious Experts. They're elected by the people every four years. Uh, there's 86 different members. Uh, there was a requirement of some type of seminary or religious background masters, but not anymore. Uh, they select the Supreme Leader when there is a vacancy. So it's only happened once in the uh, history of this the Islamic Republic of Iran, but they get that responsibility. They can also dismiss the Supreme Leader. Uh, they meet once or twice a year. They also have an expediency council. Uh, they're appointed by the Supreme Leader. So this is the makeup of a lot of higher end individuals within the government, including the President, uh, that Chief Justice or Chief Judge, the Speaker in the Majlis. Uh, again, they referee disputes between the Majlis and the Guardian Council. The Guardian Council can look at those bills and laws that are, are created by the Majlis. Uh, and they usually side with the Guardian Council because it's more of a religious uh, organization uh, or body of people. So the Expedience Council will side with them. They can create and craft their own legislation and send it to the Majlis as well. For the president, this is a person that's elected. So again, if you look at uh, Amenajad was the president uh, from 2005 to 2013, was not a cleric, does not have to be a cleric, it's just a, a person that's elected by the people, it's the highest elected official, and it's the head of government. Then that person will select the VP and the cabinet for them. They can appoint governors, town mayors, ambassadors, they do the budget, just kind of like prepare a budget and it's kind of get approved. They look at the economy, propose legislation, they execute all the policies within the government, uh, treaties with other nations and agreements. Uh, even though the head of government in Iran, the position is called the president. A lot of times in other countries, the head of government is a prime minister. Uh, your current president that took office in 2013 and re-elected in 2017 is uh, Rouhani, okay? and more of a moderate individual where um, Amenajad was more conservative, wants to improve kind of the international image and work with different countries. The Majlis, which we'll hear a lot about, is a unicameral house. So their parliament, um, they have 290 members, single member district elected every four years. They create and change laws. Again, one of those 
jobs of the Majlis, they approve six members of the Guardian Council, which are nominated by the Chief Justice, so kind of like a check and balance there. Uh, they can investigate the cabinet uh, that the president sets up. That's also a check. Uh, they can remove the cabinet. And then they get to approve different things like treaties and budgets and appointments. If you look at their judicial branch, again, based off of Sharia law, uh, these clerics are appointed the chief justice is a five-year term appointed by that supreme leader and heads the judicial branch. Uh, manages and appoints and removes judges. That Supreme Court, again, all high-ranking clerics who are familiar with Sharia law. If you look at uh, some of their military aspects, they have Revolutionary Guards. These are elite military forces with commanders appointed by the Supreme Leader themselves, kind of like the People's Liberation Army in China. Uh, they do have a say in policy making. Uh, they are different from the Iranian military, it has its own budget, different type of uniforms and weapons. They are to protect the republic. So the idea of this theocracy and this government structure, they had a big role in the Iraq war, where the Iranian military is there to um, support and protect the borders from outside forces. So again, they're protecting the borders. Revolutionary Guard is kind of protecting the concept behind their government structure. There's also an organization uh, that has been very prevalent, uh, the Baji, which is an organization to uh, protect uh, loosely organized military, protect the um, theocracy and the government itself. Uh, so if there's you know riots or demonstrations, they're kind of sent in uh, to do that. Uh, they also were sent in during the Iraqi Iran war because uh, they needed civilian soldiers. Uh, they're more like a police force at times. So when they had the Green Revolution, which was uh, individuals trying to get more political rights and freedoms, uh, they were kind of sent in to help end that and to silence those individuals.